Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem 5 from Super Quiz 3. And the structure of this problem is a little bit different. So you see I've given a table and a bunch of examples on the left. So these are sets along with a multiplication and an addition. And we want to identify how much structure we have, right, in terms of the spectrum from ring up to field. So uh, each of these is getting harder as we go from left to right, meaning uh, I feel like every field is an integral domain, but not every integral domain is a field. And every integral domain is a commutative ring with identity, but not conversely and all the way up. A commutative ring with identity is a commutative ring, but again, commutative ring may not have an identity. Commutative ring is a ring. Of course, not every ring is commutative. And then, of course, there are some things that just aren't rings at all. And so what we want to do is mark off all of the properties that each of these sets along with the given binary operation satisfy, and then maybe uh, explain why it doesn't satisfy the next item on the list. So we'll start with the integers. The integers, absolutely, definitely a ring. It is our primary example of a ring. Uh, right, it's closed under addition, it's closed under multiplication, all of the ring axioms hold. We love the integers, right? In fact, we know that the multiplication on the integers is commutative, so it's even a commutative ring. And, of course, there's an identity element. The number one is the multiplicative identity. All right, being an integral domain, right, that's telling you that you have no non-zero, zero divisors, right? That is, right, if you multiply two items in an integral domain together and you get zero, then that implies one of those items must be zero. Of course, that is a property that we know holds for the integers. So it is an integral domain. Finally, we have uh, a field. And of course, the big deal when you go from an integral domain to a field is you get inverses, right? Multiplicative inverses of every element except zero, of course. We never divide by zero. We don't kick puppies. The integers, unfortunately, are not a field. Why not? They're not a field because you can't invert non-zero elements other than 1 and minus 1. So for the integers, we know that, for example, 2 is not invertible. right? And you might be saying, well, sure it is. 2 times a half is equal to 1, but a half is not an integer. So we do not get a field for the integers. All right. Uh, what about the next one on this list? This will be, it looks like, oh, the integers? Ah, but it's non-negative integers. Same addition and multiplication. And this is a bit tricky because you say, well, look, it's got this nice zero. It's got these binary operations, right? If you add two uh, integers, you multiply two integers, it's closed, yada, yada. And yet it's actually not a ring at all. One of the axioms for being a ring is that you have to have additive inverses. So if I have a 5, I need to have a minus 5. And minus 5 is a negative number. It's not in this ring. So z greater than or equal to 0 is not even a ring because does not contain additive inverses. For example negative 5 is not an element of z greater than or equal to 0. All right, so we just don't get anything on that line. All right, the next line, we have 5z. So these are all the multiples of 5. And, well, maybe it's a little surprising that this actually does form a ring, but it, sure enough, it does. 0 is a multiple of 5. It's closed under addition. It's closed under multiple multiplication and we even have those additive inverses that we were talking about right if you, you know, you're looking for a multiple of five like 35 it, it's additive inverse negative 35 is also a multiple of five so this is actually a ring uh, and of course you're working inside the integers so it's still a commutative ring however it is not a commutative ring with identity because the identity element for the integers is one all right, that's the only identity that's going to work, right? If you take any multiple of 5 and multiply it by uh, some other multiple of 5, you are not going to get back the original element, 
Okay, so 5z is not a commutative ring with identity because 1 is not an element of 5z. Now, let me make one little observation about what I'm saying here that's it's a little bit tricky. Um, there are some rings you can go into, particularly modular uh, integer rings, where the number 1, or really the equivalent class of 1, is not in uh, the ring. However, it still does have a multiplicative identity. It just changes. Uh, so that's kind of a weird example. Um, and, and I don't want to delve, dive too deeply into that right here, but just mention, all right, we really do need to argue, right, that there is no other way, right, of multiplying two things together in the integers and getting back the original, right? So if you have like A times B equals A, the only way this can happen for any integers is when b is equal to 1, right? This never, ever happened. Oh, of course, if a is 0, right? That's one way. But uh, assuming a is some arbitrary uh, integer, the only way this can happen, right, for all a is if, a, uh, is if b is equal to 1, all right? Even for 5z, okay? So it's, even if it just takes some subset of integers that's not just the zero, then then b equals one is the only way to do it. Okay, well, let's move on. So now we're going to go to the seven uh, modular integers. So we are using the addition and the multiplication mod seven, and it does form a ring, right? We we actually are closed under this operation. We know that it's commutative. All right, it's actually a quotient of the integers, so it will be commutative. Uh, we have an identity, right? The equivalent class of one. Now, integral domain is where we have to start worrying a little bit, but because seven is a prime, we actually get this is an integral domain, and amazingly, this is even a field. So we showed that when we mod out by a prime multiple of z, we actually will always get a field. So that's a... Uh, that's just like the nicest we can get here. Okay, but then we go to Z mod 12 Z, and this is going to be a little different. It's still a ring, still a commutative ring. You still have this identity class, the class of one, but it's no longer an integral domain because, so if we're looking at Z mod 12 Z, I can take, for example, the class of three and the class of four. I will get the class of 12, which is equal to the class of zero. Or if you prefer, 3 times 4 is equal to 12, and this is congruent to 0 mod 12. Okay, so here 3 and 4 are not congruent to 0 mod 12, and yet their product is congruent to 0 mod 12. And so we have found some 0 divisors, and so we don't have an integral domain. All right, let's see. The next one, oh, how interesting. So here we're looking at, it's a polynomial ring, so you see the, the square brackets around the x, that lets you know it's a polynomial ring. But then the coefficients come from the field z mod 5z. I know it's a field because of the 5. Okay, so this is a field. So I just have an fx, right? We've actually talked about that uh, in problems 3 and 4 in this exam. So it definitely is a ring, and it's a commutative ring. And it's a commutative ring with identity, right? You still have the, the class of one in there. Uh, is it an integral domain? Well, yeah, we, we actually know whenever you have any field and you look at the polynomial ring, this forms an integral domain. Okay, now is it a field? Well, okay, I pointed this arrow here at z mod 5z, and you might have thought, oh, the whole thing is a field. But no, it's just the coefficient ring, which is a field. The polynomial ring is not a field because you still can't invert x. Okay, so we'll make a little room down here. Z mod 5z x. Right? In here, x is not invertible. There's nothing to multiply x by to get 1, right? Which you can check by, for example, looking at the degrees. If I took the degree of x times any polynomial, since I'm working in integral domain, I know this will be the degree of x plus the degree of f, and the degree of x is equal to 1. 
And so this is going to equal or greater than, be greater than or equal to 1, well, greater than or equal to 1. In particular, this means that x times f, right, so this implies x times f, does not equal 1 because the degree of 1 is 0. All right. So we do not have a field. All right, now the very last one, I actually don't give you the set. All right, I'm asking you to do it for me. All right, well, okay, now I'm doing it for me. Okay, fine. So we're looking here for an example of a ring that is not a commutative ring. And a good example of that is going to be, say, two by two matrices over the real numbers. So this does form a ring you can add, right? And of course, we're using the normal addition and multiplication of matrices, but you can add and you can multiply, you can subtract matrices. Uh, but typically, matrices don't commute. So for example, uh, let's say we took uh, 1, 1, 1, 0 times 1, 0, 0, 0. Let's see what we're going to get here. We get 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 0 is 0. And if we do it in the other direction, we get 1, 1, 0, 0. And these are not the same thing, right? They're not the same. Therefore, the matrix multiplication is not commutative. All right, there we go. We filled in our table. Take care. We'll see you next time.